Hello everyone. Uh, our uh, talk to will start with this famous uh, story of uh, the blind people who are trying to describe an elephant. This is actually the real situation in the cat lab. Everyone is tell you uh, this lesion is significant. This lesion is look hazy, but uh, uh, this come from uh, luminography only from coronary angiography. We can't uh, uh, comment on the wall like the OCT or the physiological significance like uh, FFR or IFR. So a single modality rarely gives the wall trust. We'll start with a quick basics about uh, OCT. The OCT technology uh, back to uh, early 1991 at the MIT and it was a long journey till FD approval at 2005. OCT represent optical biopsy. It depends on a rotating near infrared pulses and uh, that received using what is called interferometer. Then it generate a picture according to the amplitude and time delay of the reflected waves like this picture we have a cumulative evidence behind the OCT uh, technology qualifies class 2a level of evidence B uh, for uh, using on uh, scent optimization and also 2a level of evidence C for uh, treatment of stent failure as uh, the last ACC guidelines uh, for revascularization when we are comparing OCT versus IVUS, we are simply comparing light versus sound. As we all know, uh, uh, light has a very high uh, velocity so that uh, uh, the light can travel from Earth to Moon in about 1.3 seconds. This is because light has a very short wavelength. This actually translated into high resolution in comparison with IVUS about 10 times the resolution of IVAS, but this actually come at the expense of tissue penetration. Tissue penetration is lower for OCT in comparison with IVAS. So how to perform a comprehensive OCT study? This is uh, uh, the common, uh, commonly used catheter, the Dragonfly Optus catheter, come with uh, a side arm. We flush the side arm with 3cc of 100% contrast, then cover the drive motor unit with trial cover and insert this end to the drive motor unit uh, via clockwise rotation till you hear a click. The profile of the OCT caster is about 2.8 French, so it is uh, compatible with our 6 French uh, guide caster and it can be uh, used for assessment of any vessel above 2 mm in diameter. On the OCT caster we have 3 markers, the lower one at the tip and a middle one which is an important one for uh, the lens and upper or proximal one. We introduce the caster in the uh, vessel till the middle marker which is a lens marker beyond the area of interest. Remember always to inject nitroglycerin and uh, full heparinization uh, before OCT reading or any intravascular imaging to avoid any vasospasm effect on uh, your measurements. Remember also as uh, blood is the enemy of infrared light so a caveat of OCT is to remove the colon of blood uh, uh, during imaging of the vessel. This is the image that appear after entering a patient data. <coughs> you have uh, two modes, the survey mode which you can survey up to 75 millimeter in length but it uh, came at the expense of uh, less frame rate or the 50 millimeter uh, high resolution mode which has twice the frame rate of the survey one. Then purge the side arm of the caster as we mentioned before with uh, contrast to avoid any blood in the lumen of the caster that may cause light attenuation and the blurred picture. Then click on this button, calibrate catheter. Next step is uh, uh, pushing, pu pu push this button, uh, enable pullback. We have two options either manual pullback 
uh, or automated pullback. Usually we use automated pullback. Automated pullback means that uh, when you inject uh, uh, contrast or media to remove blood from the lumen, uh, it is sensed by the drive motor unit and it starts the pullback run. How much we inject? We inject about 3 milliliter per second for 3 or 4 seconds uh, uh, regarding if we are uh, imaging the right coronary artery a little bit higher 4 millimeter per second if we are imaging uh, the left coronary artery we can use either contrast 100% uh, dextran but it also uh, has some nephrotoxic effect or mix of contrast with saline and recently we have a comparative evidence of using 100% uh, uh, saline with uh, near optimal result uh, as compared to contrast medium Finally, revise your run before removing your catheter. Remember, everything you are introducing into the coronary or the catheter are a little bit thrombogenic, so don't forget to uh, pull back or remove your catheter after uh, making sure you have a good run. This actually what happened. We inject the dye, this sensed by the drive motor unit, start moving the lens from the middle marker to the proximal marker uh, across the area of interest. This is uh, the screen of uh, OCT after we get the pullback run. At this area of the screen, we have the axial cut. At this uh, region, we have the longitudinal uh, cut of the vessel. Uh, this segment represents the lumen profile of the vessel. This red markers uh, uh, is the markers of uh, inadequate cuts at this uh, frames. Uh, we have uh, this uh, green or blue uh, uh, marker uh, which is the reference marker we put it at the edge of the area of interest approximately and distally and then the uh, uh, system automatically calculates the minimal luminal area across the area of interest uh, you can get this measurement of the lumen either automated or you can modify it using the measurement tool from this button and start putting your uh, dot using uh, the bin. This marker is a marker of the alignment of uh, the longitudinal cut in relation to the vessel. We can move it uh, up and down or across the vessel as we uh, need. Then uh, to show your measurement in the uh, same screen, and press on this ruler uh, button and hold the picture using this lock uh, option then you can save uh, your measurement using save frame option this button uh, the remaining is the view mode we will show uh, the use of this uh, uh, button in the coming slides so to maximize the benefit from uh, your OST caster it is better to uh, go with algorithmic approach before BCI during lesion assessment we have the mnemonic of MLD M for morphology L for lens D for diameter actually when we adopt this uh, uh, strategy this translated into change the, the, the decision of the operator in about 57 percent of uh, cases this data from the aluminum one study that means we might uh, uh, discover that we have a calcified lesion that need preparation. We might uh, find that we have uh, to cover more lens or less according to uh, the lens uh, assessment and uh, uh, change the diameter of uh, the stent uh, after we getting the OST uh, pictures. Starting with uh, how normal visual appear. As we all know from pathology, the uh, coronary artery composed of three layers. The inner layer, which is the intima, it is the bright layer here, followed by the middle layer of media, less bright, and then the adventitia, which appear heterogeneous, bright all over, uh, all around the vessel. And here is our uh, catheter, and this is our uh, artifact. When we zoom on uh, this uh, region, this is the media which is the less bright between the antenna and the adventitia it is surrounded actually by two membrane in internal elastic lamina and external elastic lamina external elastic lamina is uh, uh, an important 
uh, region which uh, uh, we take our measurements uh, 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 along the external elastic lamina so it is important to uh, be familiar where it lies this is a common artifact that we uh, might face during OCT imaging the first one is shadowing the artifact this actually caused by inadequate flush of the side arm of the caster or the lumen of the caster we have blood here inside the caster itself and as we uh, said before uh, blood is the enemy of uh, infrared light this called uh, uh, cause uh, light uh, attenuation and uh, blared picture all around the solution of this artifact is very simple just to flush of uh, the lumen of the caster this artifact is uh, uh, caused by inadequate flushing of the uh, lumen of the vessel itself during the injection the injection might be not forceful one and to get optimum uh, uh, picture if this error uh, or artifact become uh, repeated is just use uh, a pump with a rate 3 milliliter uh, per second for the right coronary artery 4 milliliter per second for the left coronary artery and finally this is a rotational uh, distortion uh, artifact that caused by crossing of the uh, OCD caster across a calcified uh, or tortuous uh, or narrow vessel segment we have important uh, terms during description of the morphology of uh, a lesion. The first one is backscattering, which means a brightness due to light reflection. We have either uh, low backscattering, that means uh, the, uh, the lesion is less bright, or uh, high backscattering, that means the lesion is uh, uh, very bright. Second term is attenuation. Attenuation is the darkening of what behind due to light absorption. Again, if we have, uh, if we say uh, uh, this lesion is, has high attenuation, this means that we can see uh, what behind because it absorbs the light. A lesion with low attenuation, that means we uh, are seeing what behind uh, in a good way. Quick example, the fat rich block, it has a low backscattering, that means it is less bright. And it has high attenuation, that means we can see what behind. On the other hand, the fibrous plug has high backscattering, that means it is very bright, and low light attenuation, that means we, we can see what behind. And here is an, an example of uh, the different black morphologies. Starting with the fibrous plug, we can uh, appreciate uh, th that it is very bright, that means high backscattering, and we can see what behind, so it has low attenuation. On the other hand, a lipid rich plaque has low backscattering, less bright, and it appears ill defined and diffuse due to a high attenuation. What is bright on the surface is the fibrous cap of the atheroma, and measurement of this cap is very important to differentiate between thin cap, the fiber atheroma, with a cap less than 65 micron, uh, which uh, translated into what is called the vulnerable plaque. Third common lesion is calcified lesion. It has intermediate backscattering, that means intermediate brightness between the fibrous and lipid one. With low attenuation, that means we can see all the thickness of the calcium here, and it is also well defined. If we get a bin, we can uh, get around it uh, easily. One of the benefits of uh, OCT uh, and advantages over uh, IVAS is actually we can measure the thickness of calcium, not only determine the uh, angle uh, uh, of uh, calcium or the length, it can also uh, give the thickness. That's because the light can uh, pass through the calcium with low attenuation. On the other hand, the ultrasonic wave gets reflected on the surface of the calcium and causing acoustic shadowing behind, so we can't calculate the thickness of calcium. And uh, he, here we've come to an important score that depends on the, the data derived from assessment of calcified plaque, like uh, the calcium angulation, uh, how, uh, how long around the circumference of vessel it, uh, it lies, more than 180. Uh, which, mean, which mean two quadrant or less and giving zero or two points the maximum calcium thickness as we said before one of the advantages of OCT is that we can measure the thickness from the axial cut below 0.5 uh, uh, zero point 
more than 0 0.5 point and finally the calcium lens blue than uh, 5 millimeter uh, 0 point more than 5 millimeter is 1 point a total maximum score is 4 uh, if we have a score of 3 or more that mean uh, we have a high risk of stent under expansion which mean uh, we should consider plaque modification using uh, some uh, uh, instruments like like shock wave or uh, root ablations then we shift to the lumen in acute coronary syndrome patient uh, uh, OCD has a very high sensitivity uh, to detect uh, intraluminal thrombus we have two types of thrombus as we know from pathology the red thrombus which commonly seen with plaque rupture and it is rich in RBCs and fibrin which again is the enemy of the infrared light so it has high attenuation as we see here on the other hand the white thrombus uh, which uh, formed mainly from platelets and it is commonly seen in patients with non stemi or black erosion it has a, a low attenuation so we can see uh, the whole uh, thrombus itself unlike the red one so to sum up the morphology assessment if we can see all the layers and the media advantage of the vessel uh, for the entire circumference of the vessel so it is a normal one we can see it but second it is a fibrous plaque because it has high uh, back scattering and low attenuation so we can see uh, all the layer on the other hand if we detect a change uh, on the signal of light we determine if it is changed at the lumen so we have something inside the lumen like a thrombus to determine the type of thrombus we look at it if, we, if it has a high attenuation that means it is a red thrombus if it has a low attenuation it is a white thrombus if the change of the signal occur at the level of the wall if it is associated with high attenuation we can see what behind it is uh, mostly a lipid breach plaque if we can see what behind and it has intermediate back scattering and low attenuation it is a calcified one the second uh, uh, part of uh, lesion assessment is lens assessment a perfect landing zone with would be uh, uh, an area which has a black burden less than 50 percent and no high lipid core at the edges because a high lipid core at the edge of stent carry high risk of edge dissection black rupture and uh, nori flow so we can easily get uh, this target lesion from the longitudinal run and voting uh, uh, a book marks uh, on this uh, longitudinal run and using the feature of core registration we can see uh, the uh, target zone on the angiography uh, inside uh, the cath lab and this uh, actually very uh, sensitive with a very low uh, error margin of only one millimeter the third uh, part of uh, assessment of the lesion is detecting the diameter of the distal reference to uh, size uh, the stent we have two options either to trace the lumen itself and uh, uh, upsize the stent to the nearest uh, uh, stent size uh, by 0.25 millimeter or uh, tracing the external elastic lamina outside the media uh, and downsize uh, to the nearest stent by 0.25 millimeter when to use this uh, and when to use this one we actually prefer the use of external elastic uh, uh, lamina uh, but if we can see it uh, more than uh, uh, 180 degree of the circumference of the vessel if we can't uh, uh, see it uh, on uh, this circumference so we opt for uh, the using of human reference using the external uh, elastic lamina for sizing uh, uh, is translated into a higher uh, stent expansion uh, in comparison to uh, the human one so we uh, did lesion assessment and deployed the stent what is next is assessment of uh, the uh, the visual post stenting we have the mnemonic max m for medial dissection a for apposition x for uh, expansion and the same uh, assessment of this uh, three elements have changed the decision in about 27 percent of cases post bci from the Lumion 1 study 
either we get uh, uh, some dissection that we have to fix with a stent or a position malaposition or under expansion that we have to fix with non-compliant balloon starting with medial dissection not every dissection uh, we should uh, uh, manage with a stent only if the dissection taking about more than six degrees of the circumference of the bezel reaching the media that means it is deep one or long one uh, more than two millimeter and we can get this information easily from the lingotidinal run and as we all know the distal edge dissection is more dangerous than the proximal one because it is against the flow and it may extend with the uh, flow one second item of the uh, center assessment is a position a position means that the strut is uh, lies on the wall what is the cutoff point? The cutoff point is 150% uh, the strut thickness. Most of the platform we use nowadays is about 81 uh, milli, uh, micron in, in thickness. So the cutoff point of malaposition might be 120 uh, micron. Not every malaposition need uh, optimization. Only if it is uh, significant, that means it is more than 400 micron or 0.4 millimeter and extending more than one millimeter in length how to assess this easily uh, returning to the view mode uh, that uh, the button on the lower uh, uh, on the on the upper left side of the screen then we choose render the stent option we get the stent as we see here if we have a uh, malapose strut it will come on a uh, red color uh, uh, and this uh, line uh, is uh, a color coding for stent opposition severe stent malaposition more than uh, 400 micron or 0.4 millimeter will be coded with the this red color as we see here is third item is stent expansion stent expansion is a conformability of the stent all over uh, the stented lens we put the uh, uh, marker at the reference uh, lumen at the proximal and the distal end of the uh, bezel then uh, it calculate automatically the minimal st stand area uh, by this marker when dividing the minimal stand area over the average uh, reference lumen area of the distal and the proximal one we get a number it's this number ab above 80 percent that means it is uh, good stent expansion uh, uh, better if it is more than 90 percent but 80 percent is uh, okay this slide summarizes what we have said before the assessment of uh, lesion before uh, the length the diameter and the uh, morphology of uh, lesion and both sustaining uh, the assessment of max which is medial dissection and uh, malaposition and uh, stent expansion we have also uh, another uh, parameter for assessment of stent expansion rather than the minimal stent expansion which is a fixed number come from some studies like doctor's study uh, which is 4.5 uh, uh, cubic centimeter below this number um, we suspect that the stent is uh, actually under expanded there is some different cut point between study and another there is another one uh, of 5.4 uh, but it is better to use the minimal stent expansion because it is uh, uh, adapting a, a single number for ma like a proximal led uh, actually it is not the same for a small om branch so we come to the clinical application of OCT. It is of great value in uh, detecting uh, uh, the culprit, ambiguous culprit in uh, acute coronary syndrome or minuca cases. Many of these cases we might uh, uh, tell the patient we have nothing, we have normal coronaries and we, when we Im uh, image uh, the, his coronary with uh, OCT we find erosion, rupture, eruptive calcitonodule actually in about 20 percent cases of minuca this might alter our management plan and here in uh, an example of a case of minuca if we look at the angio nothing uh, terrible but uh, if we look at the OCT imaging of the same lesion we have here uh, a thrombus in the human 
So uh, take us to the next step, which is tailor the management of acute coronary syndrome. It is, uh, uh, it is not the same if we uh, get OST image and, uh, and know the patient have a plaque rupture or we know the patient have plaque erosion. Plaque ruptures that mean uh, we should cover this uh, lesion with stent. Uh, like plaque erosion, the data from erosion study, if we have uh, a lesion less than 70% and we have a plaque erosion, we can safely defer standing for those patients with resolution of thrombus in one month OCT on the erosion study and they come with uh, uh, translated into safe clinical outcome uh, in the form of uh, comparable mace at uh, one year. So the future of PCI might be uh, an OCT for uh, the uh, lesion less than 70% and if we have black erosion, we might consider the first stenting. If we have black rupture, we cover it to uh, by stent. This is actually uh, uh, not uncommon. If we know that 27% uh, of the STEMI cases have only black erosion, and up to 49% of the non STEMI cases have black erosion. Then uh, <coughs> OCT is uh, highly valuable in assessment of plaque vulnerability. We might see an uh, intermediate uh, lesion and uh, uh, by angio we can say it is not significant, then we do FFR and say oh it is 0.9 so it is non significant and then we get this picture by OCT we have a high lipid core plaque with a thin cap less than 65 micron this plaque is highly uh, 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 prone for uh, rupture and acute coronary syndrome. This is not actually translated into that we should uh, uh, stand this lesion. We have no evidence till now, but uh, we, we uh, might think that this patient is a vulnerable patient, not dealing with such with only a plaque, but the patient profile uh, himself. Uh, what about his LDL? What about his hemoglobin A1C? What about smoking? we should optimize the patient. We have a vulnerable patient and a vulnerable plaque. Actually, this study confirm what we are discussing. Uh, the combined FFR OCT trial, they included patient with intermediate coronary lesion, then they did them uh, an FFR, and if the FFR non-significant above 0.8, they do them OCT, and then they have two groups. A group that uh, uh, the OCT revealed thin cap fibroathroma and another group with thick uh, cap uh, fibroathroma. In comparison with uh, 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 both arms, patient with thin cap fibroathroma has five fold rate of mace uh, in comparison with the non thin cap uh, one. Even we know that this patient have non significant, physiologically non significant lesion by FFR, they still have a very high risk of mass. OCD is very important also in assessment of stent failure, class 2A indication. Uh, before we put a stent into a failed stent, we should uh, know the cause of stent failure. It is not the same uh, when we get this image and we have stent fracture with the double layer uh, sign. The management is totally different when we have this stent, which is under expanded stent. If we see here, this is the stent size and this is the visal size. What actually happened uh, by coronary angiography, you can differentiate between this picture. So if you end by putting a stent inside the under expanded stent, you add another pathology inside the already present one. But if you if you do uh, intravascular imaging and getting this picture of severely under expanded stent, then you will alter your management of the case. You will do uh, uh, stent uh, optimization by high inflation of non-compliant balloon, then you can end with uh, only drug coated balloon inside it. Then we come to bifurcation lesion. As we all know, bifurcation lesion is one of the uh, complex uh, uh, PCI uh, field and it has uh, a higher rate of uh, uh, mace outcome uh, in comparison to the regular PCI. 
you have high rate of malopause struts under expanded stent so it is ideal to use uh, intravascular imaging for stent optimization using the mnemonic as we said the MLD max mnemonic it's also uh, we know that uh, with some techniques of bifurcation it is uh, uh, crucial to uh, do proximal uh, strut crossing or distal crossing so this actually by Andrew is like a dream but using OCT and getting a picture like this you can be sure 100% if you are crossing proximal or distal and then after you uh, did your uh, job and you have a side branch that is compromised and you don't know it's tented or not then you can simply pass your uh, OCT caster into this side branch and get an image and idea if what you see is just a carry a shift this uh, another story or you have a, 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 a true lesion in the side branch that uh, should be covered we can uh, get this nice views from uh, the option of view one and get the 3d uh, navigation mode using what uh, you want to see uh, side branch the wires the human only all this is uh, available an important uh, issue also is the, uh, studying the vascular healing after CTO PCI. This is the CTO lesion. This is what happened after we uh, revascularized uh, the CTO. We have a severely negatively remodeled bezel. And if we size the, our stent upon this diameter, we will definitely uh, end uh, by about six months or one year after reverse remodeling of this bezel, like here with oh, this image in uh, intravascular imaging which is significant malaposition and strut uncovered this actually tend to uh, worse outcome with higher rate of stent thrombosis as uh, studied by this uh, registers so knowing this fact might change our practice by uh, uh, putting the those cohort of patient of OC, uh, CTO patient into and prolong it uh, depth therapy rather than the six months uh, duration uh, up to 12 months or more according to the bleeding risk of uh, your patient it is also important on studying the different platform of stents and it is uh, its outcome uh, it uh, this is an example of the bivascular scaffold uh, stent thrombosis that uh, cause uh, withdrawal uh, from market Another issue is intramural hematoma. If you see this lesion, you might think it is uh, an atherosclerotic lesion, something like that. But when you stent this lesion, you can uh, get this lesion expanded into the whole vessel, or you get an extended dissection on this vessel. This is crystal clear. If we uh, get an OCT image of this segment, we have intramural hematoma, and this will change your management plan you will uh, find uh, uh, get a, a longer stent to ensure scaffolding uh, of the edges of uh, uh, the hematoma it is also valuable in cases of spontaneous coronary artery dissection to get inside the true lumen if indicated uh, actually for revascularization as we know this is not the uh, policy in uh, the SCAD patient but it can also add expense of potential uh, extension of the section due to contrast injection. Finally, we uh, go to the limitation of OC. First, for a long time, we have this famous uh, limitation, which is uh, we can't image the aorta osteal lesion like osteal RCA, osteal left mean, due to inability to inject uh, contrast and uh, uh, clear the blood from uh, the lumen uh, our guide casters are uh, infrared uh, 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 unfriendly as we can say they can't uh, allow the infrared light to uh, pass through it but we have this intelligent uh, solution uh, recently which is the see through technique it entails the use of uh, guide caster extension called telescope this uh, uh, guide extension has a unique feature of uh, the design of 
helical coil allow the passage of infrared light through it and getting a nice images as we see here other limitation include ectatic and tortuous vessel related to the uh, penetration uh, features of OCT which is limited in comparison with IVIS live guidance in CTO uh, puncturing uh, proximal cap like uh, IVIS this is not feasible by OCT severe LV dysfunction and renal impairment as we said before we might use uh, saline 100% rather than contrast and we have some studies recently uh, that uh, prove the feasibility of using 100% saline and getting a nice picture in about 70% of patient and the interpretable picture in about 20% of patients so overall we can get uh, our uh, uh, key uh, message from OCT in about 90% of patient using saline only what about the future of OCT we have this innovation which is called OFR uh, this uh, software which is the OCT plus system it uses the uh, conformation of mass uh, physics and uh, calculated an estimated FFR depending on the OCT run actually uh, we have a validation study published 2020 and showed uh, accuracy of this technique in about 92 percent of patient that goes with the measured one using invasive uh, FFR wire also we have artificial uh, intelligence uh, the software which is called Alterion 1 it do all the mnemonic itself it assess the morphology and say, telling you that you have a calcium lesion with an arc of uh, 200 as we see here and a thickness of uh, something and uh, also a length of uh, that that could alter your management then it gave you the reference uh, diameter and the length and using core registration it help you in deployment of the stent then after stenting it do the max mnemonic it detect uh, any dissection a position and give you the percent of stent expansion and finally uh, we have um, an hybrid casters that contain OCT and the IVAS on the same catheter this uh, we have two systems the uh, uh, Gunavi one and the Tromo hybrid one uh, give you OCT uh, picture and IVAS picture and superimposed uh, picture like here this uh, by this technology you get the, the advantages of every modality you have the high resolution picture of OCT and you have a good uh, penetration of IVAS and finally this is a very useful application which is the OCT 8 application you can find everything you want to know about OCT in this application it is highly recommended and finally thank you and thank you uh, uh, our uh, pioneers who uh, introduced this technology to us starting with David Hong uh, who uh, PhD on the early 90s uh, was uh, on OCT and he uh, did the first OCT imaging in vitro uh, started as the ophthalmology uh, uh, field and uh, Dr. James Kojimoto the godfather of OCT from uh, MIT USA and uh, Gary uh, Turney is actually a pathologist and he get uh, the picture of the first in vivo OCT in human thank you all